Check one, two, check one, two. Is anyone out there? If you are, if you could let me know in the chat, I'm just doing a test for the audio and to make sure that you are seeing this correctly. Can you read that? Sometimes YouTube is playing tricks on me and it's backwards, but I think it looks okay. Hello, anybody there? I'm gonna have a skittle. Hello, check one, two, check one, two. If you are online and you can hear me and you can see the video, if you could let me know in the chat that everything's okay, that would be great. Hello, check one, two, check one, two. Is anyone out there? If you can hear me, if you can let me know. Hello everyone. Oh, thank you, Mariel. I appreciate it. Can you see the magnet? Okay, can you read it? Hello. Draconic gecko. Hmm. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are going to get started a little blurry on the magnet. Okay, here we'll try this and how's that, is that better? Thank you, Mary, I really appreciate it. I did a check and went through and everything seemed to be okay, but. 
Just want to make sure before we get started, we will be starting at 630. So we have about five minutes. You can hear me movie. Can you hear me eat my Skittle? <laughs> I should have background music. I can sing to you if you want. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> thank you, Andrea. Thank you, thank you. Andrea, it's my pleasure to do this. This is so much fun. It's so cool that we can do this. And, you know, I'm in my painting room. All right, I'll see you for the turtle, Andrea. Thank you. Okay, we have about three minutes. You're crocheting a purse to eventually sell. <laughs> oh, that's cool. All right, well, we have about three minutes and the turtle will be at 7.15 if we are going to paint this sloth first. And then the turtle. So if you can say hi in the chat so I can see who's here, that would be great. We have Mariel and Zayden, and see who else is here. Okay, we only have one more minute. Hello, Turkle. I think that's what it says. Either that or turkey, not turkey, Turkle. Thank you for joining me. All right, we're almost ready. So if you don't already, if you can have your paint pots open, Get a little cup of water, and that should be good. Have everything set up. Roll up your sleeves if you have them. 
Okay, we're going to get started. All right, everyone, welcome to the Sparkling Art Virtual Painting Party presented by the Governor Mifflin Intermediate School. My name is Nettie Price, and I am an artist here in Reading. I create whimsical, vibrant, and fun sparkling art. And in the painting party in the bag, um, we have the sloth and the turtle. Uh, we will be doing the sloth first, 6.30 to 7.15, and then we will be painting the turtle at 7.15. So I want to thank you all for being here. We're going to have a lot of fun. And I'm going to show you the general steps that I take to create my artwork. And um, But before we get started, just so you know, the video will be available after the live stream. And if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. I will be checking it. Um, if I'm going too fast or if you can't hear me or if there's anything wrong, please feel free to just let me know in the chat. Um, so we have everything set up. We have our paint pots. And if you look at the paint pot, you'll notice there's two white. Um, if you can save one white till the end, and we can use the other white to mix the colors. Now, one other thing is that in order to cover the black line, you have to add white to whatever color you choose. So when you look at this canvas, I painted each in every one of these, um, you'll notice that the black line is really, really thick and it kind of looks kind of clumpy, but I do that for a reason. And that is, if you look at the magnet, you can see that the black line is really thin. So we're gonna go from a wide black line to a very thin black line. And we're going to do that with our brush stroke. So for example, when we're doing the fur from the difference between the pink and the blue, we're gonna do our brush stroke out into the black line, and then the brush stroke is gonna come into the black line. So we're gonna create like this really jagged, organic line that you would never be able to create if you, you know, took a black pen and made fur. So we're gonna use that. That's one of the major techniques that I use. And also, if you cover over the black line and you lose it and you can't, you know, you paint it over it and you can't see it anymore, no worries, what I do is after it's dry, like tomorrow, just go in with a Sharpie marker and you can you know, clean it up, connect the lines that you may have missed or you know, just um, emphasize lines that might have been covered over. So just so you know, um, that's pretty much how I work. Now, I don't expect you to finish this painting tonight. I mean, I wouldn't even finish it if it were me just painting by myself. But what I really want to do is just to show you how I do it so that you can um, kind of go at your own pace. This is going to be layers upon layers. So once I, um, once I go through and show you the fundamentals of it, then you can keep working on it um, if you'd like to. Okay, so what's the first step? Um, I just make sure there's no little bristles that come out, especially in this one. I found that sometimes they, they came out. I just don't want to want them to get into your paint. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with the eyes. And if you notice, there's like this eyelid, eyelash, white line. We're going to do that line first, and then we're going to do the bottom of the eye. So if you want to dip it in the water, just because it's a brand new brush, you can. And we're going to dip it into the white. And I don't want to go to the edge of the black. I want to leave some black. So I'm going to go over it again with my thin, my little brush. And kind of make a nice curvy line for the eyelid. Then I'm going to come down come around and this is the bottom of the eye. It was almost like a half moon. So these black blotches are just the basis. It's like the map. You know, it's just to have the, the basic shapes of where everything is. And now we're making it more defined. So it's really not like a coloring book. You know, this isn't a paint by numbers. We're actually using the black line to create texture and variation and depth and shadow, and it's going to do really cool things with the colors 
as you'll find out. Okay, now we're gonna go on the other side and it's easier for me to go the other way. There we go. Now I'm gonna come around and do this other eye. Okay, so now we have the eyes and notice that the black is still on the other side. The next thing I wanna do is to take the white and we're going to do the nails, these long sloth nails. And if you need to turn it to the side, adjust yourself. So with this, I'm gonna come down going to follow pretty much the outline of the black and they're kind of longer pointy at the edge. Now you don't have to make them sharp like daggers, but they are pointy at the end. I'm just gonna fill that in. It's a pretty basic shape. I have my little brush and this is the first layer of the white. I'm gonna do another one here. I'm gonna stay within the black. And usually the way I start to do the painting is I'll work from light to dark. So I'll get in all of the white parts that I need and then I'll start mixing the color. Okay. We're going to go on to the next one. And we're not covering the black line. We're just kind of leaving like an eighth of an inch. And if you need to add a little water, you can do that too. Just dip it in there. It kind of makes it easier to go over on the canvas and then just do another layer of it. And I'm just making the same, it's almost like a long teardrop shape. Okay, I'm going to do the other. And I'm going to fill this in. So now another thing that the black line accomplishes is a shadow. It creates a nice under shadow that you don't even have to mix paint for. So it's really um, effective. It's funny because, you know, painting with a black line first is not really a typical way to paint, but it is, it works out for me pretty good. I like it. And I'm just going to do the first layer. Now, if you wanted to get creative, you could make these sloth nails different colors. But I like to, I'm going to put some sparkle on them. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Here we have the last one. 
Now, if you don't get all of these done, that's okay. You can work on that later. You know what you're doing here. Because the next step is I'm going to show you how to do the fur technique, which is really fun because it is, it's really cool and you, you really, you can't go wrong. It's great. You know, I've been painting this way for 10 years and I'm still not sick of it. It's amazing. Okay. How's everybody doing? Okay, okay. Now the next thing is, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the shape of the nose and do the fur into um, two colors. So this part, the muzzle, like the nose and the snout, that's going to be one color. And then the eye portion can be a different color. So I think I'm going to do pink on the nose and like a dark blue, like I have it in the magnet. But feel free to do whatever color you want. Um, so I think that's what I'm going to do. So what I want to do is I'm going to take some, and I'm just going to dip it out with my, my paintbrush. Um, you can either put it on the plate. And this, remember, keep one white completely white. Or what I like to do is mix it right onto the canvas. So I'm going to make this nose. It's just kind of like the eyes. I'm going to go around and make the shape of the eye. Or the shape of the nose, sorry. The shape of the nose. So I'm just going to paint over some of the black and make this little nose part here a little thinner. And then I want to make the mouth thinner. So if you notice, the mouth has kind of like a, um, a, wavy, a wavy line to it. So I'm going to cut in the black. You know what? I'm just going to mix it right on the canvas. And then make the black line thinner like that. So I'm just going to dip it in the black and then, or <laughs> dip it in the red and then dip it in the white and mix it on the canvas. So there we go. Get some white. I'm mixing it right on the canvas with my little brush. All right, now we're going to go out. Now that we cut around the nose and we're making the mouth a little thinner, I'm going to start with the first stroke. So what I'm going to do is the fur always grows down. You might need a little bit of water if you want. The fur grows down and I'm going to go into the black line and I'm not going to cover all of the black line. Just going to go into it. So make sure that I have white in there and Get some red, mixing it right on the canvas. And I'm going out into the black line with each individual hair stroke. The fur's growing down. You don't want the fur going up. You want the fur going down and kind of in towards the chin. So out into the black line. I don't know if you can see that. See how the brush strokes are going out into the black line? And I'm going to work it down to the bottom. Here, I'm going to open these up a little bit. I'm getting in my way. Doo -doo. Coming down towards the chin. I'm going to get some more of this. 
really light, wispy strokes. And then I'm going to come in this way, getting some of that red out of there. Hold on, I need to catch up. Okay. Zayden, I'll take it, I'll take it slower. Now remember Zayden, if you learn how to do this, then you can continue on at your own pace because essentially what we're gonna do is this center part and then around the eyes. And you can work on this and take some more time. But it's really about learning how to do it. Because like I said, I, I would never finish this in 45 minutes, but I can show you how I do it. And then you'll always know. So I'm gonna start up here at the nose and have the hair kind of go, going out into the other side. And remember, this is we're going to do layers, lots of layers. Get some red. Get some white. Mixing it right onto the canvas. And then out into the black line. I guess I'm kind of blocking it with my hand. I don't want to do that. I don't know what this is. Hmm. I have a little, something got stuck in there. And then you can keep working it into the black line. Now notice I have this side's a little bit bigger than the other side. So I'm gonna get some red, get some white and make have this come out a little bit. Okay, now we're gonna go kind of bring, remember that the fur always grows downward. And I'm going to kind of go in around the sides of the eyes. If you need to, get a little bit of water. I usually don't hardly ever use a lot of water, but sometimes it helps to keep the brush stroke clean. Okay. I'm putting this, get some white. So now this part above the eye, I'm going to really take it out over top of the eyelid. And I want this kind of, I don't want to cover all the black. I want to leave room for the blue because the longer the hair, the wider the line. And I'll do this side of the nose. See how cute that is? Oh my gosh, I love the fur. I love painting fur. I love painting animals and dogs and cats because you can do this kind of technique with any animal that has fur. This is my favorite technique for fur, for grass. You know, like if I'm painting animals outside, I'll just do a thick, a thick layer of black and then just do the, each individual stroke, you know, each blade of grass or uh, sometimes I'll do trees, especially like pine trees. I'll do this way. Really anything that has a wispy kind of flow to it, feathers. Um, I don't know. What else? Can anyone think of anything? So the reason why also I don't mix the paint on the plate is because 
you can also get some really cool color variations if you mix it on the canvas. And the key to that is to mix it where you don't really need to have, you know, I would never mix it out here. I mix it in the middle here where it doesn't matter that I mix it there because I can just go over it however I want to. Okay. Now we have the nose. Now notice how with the black line, because the black line was so thick, I, I'm going to leave some of that black shadow that's around the nose. And I mean, I wouldn't be able to do that with, with adding black to the color or trying to create a shadow. So there's really a lot you can do with the, the brush strokes into the black line with the black behind the color to create shadow, um, to create all kinds of cool textures with your paintbrush by mixing the paint on the canvas. Um, it's just fun. And then you can go back over if you, if it's too dark, then you can, um, do another layer of paint. Okay. So now I am going to try to get most of this paint off of my brush and I'm going to go over to the blue. So I'm not going to get it wet. I'm just going to, um, get the paint off of my paintbrush. Now I'm going to go into the blue and the white. So I'm going to get some of this. It's okay that the red's on there. And I'm going to get some blue. I'm going to mix it right on the canvas. And remember, I put it on a spot where it doesn't matter. And I'm going to go underneath and keep this black line where the eye is. So notice coming around, I'm trying to make the black line as thin as possible underneath this eye. I'm gonna go over and do it again. I'm gonna cut it in a little bit closer. And now I'm gonna go and do the top part. And I wanna keep some of that black line. Just try to get as close as I can and see how thin that is. So you not only get all the shadow, but now you have a thin black line. Now I'm going to take this paint and kind of get it out into the outside. And this is the cool part. I'm going to take the brush stroke and I'm going to go into the pink brush stroke. So I'm creating like this jagged line between the blue and the pink. That I wouldn't have been able to create any other way. So there you have it. Now you know all my secrets. See, see how I created this line here? The jagged line with the thick black line. Now I'm going to go in and do all the way around the other side of the eye. So I'm going to get some blue. I'm going to get some white. It's okay that the red's on there. And now I'm going to go into the pink. Kind of like, it's almost like creating a lightning bolt, like a lightning bolt line. And you can make that as thin as you want. Get it, get it as close, close as you can because you don't want it to be too heavy and overbearing. You know, the black can be too much. So you just try to get it as close as you can and then come out. So notice how I'll paint, I'll start up here with the blue. I just dipped it in the blue and then I worked it down. Now I'm gonna dip it in the white and I'm gonna work it down. Now I'm gonna come around. I think I'm working up here. How's everybody doing, okay? Are you enjoying your Skittles? I love Skittles. I think they might be my favorite.
Okay, I'm going to do the fur above the eye. Now I, I want to keep the straight line on the top of the eyelid and I'm going into the fur. And then I want to transition to a stroke that's kind of coming out. So I dipped it in the blue and I'm gonna get some of that blue paint off. Now I'm gonna dip it in the white. Okay. So essentially that's how we're going to do the whole body, all of it. And you can pick whatever color you want. So now I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna do, um, I think what I'm gonna do, I have 22 minutes. I want to show you how to do the eyeball. Because this part, you know, the fur, the fur you could work on for a, a while. You could put many, um, multiple layers on. But I wanna show you how to do, how to do the eye. So if you can take a break, okay, no matter where you are, that's okay. You may not be as far as I am, but just so you understand how this black line works and how, like the whole purpose of it. So if, as long as you have that, that'll be really good. But I think I'm gonna stop what I'm doing and I wanna do the eye. I wanna do this eye so that you know how to do that. It's pretty easy. So the eye, this one has a brown layer in it. Um, I think I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna do another white. So I'm gonna clean out my brush. And now that that has dried, I'm gonna do another layer. This time I'm going to use my, my white, my eye white. You know, this has all the different colors in it and I saved, I saved my one paint pot. And if you didn't, let's say you made a mistake and you went in and you got it messed up. You know, there's usually white on the top of the lid or you can, you know, kind of navigate and try to get some white that's just white. So what we're gonna do is do another layer. I'm gonna make it a little thicker because we're just going to have um, the black pupil. I'm doing my second layer. I'm making it a little bit thicker. I'm gonna come over the eye here. Right there. And then what I'm gonna do, just gonna take some of this paint off. I'm gonna use the other end and do a dot right there. And that's it. I'm gonna go over and do my other eye and wanna make this bottom part a little thicker. I'm just doing another layer, another layer on the lid. Just want to try to make that line nice and nice and straight. Okay, just like that. 
And then what I want to see how this dot is in the upper right hand corner. I want to put this dot in the same spot over here because the light is coming down. And go. Might make them a little bit bigger. Okay, here we have it. And then what we can do is another layer on the sloth claws. And next thing I'm going to do is let's continue on. I just wanted to get that out of the way just in case we ran out of time. Okay, now I'm going to go back and resume the eyes I'm using the blue and the white, doing the brush strokes into the fur, and I'm cutting in really close on this bottom part of the eye. Now, let's just say I got too close and I messed up the eye. What I would do is just wait. And tomorrow, come back in with the Sharpie marker and just go over that line again. Or, you know, if I made the spot on the eye too big, you could just go around it with the Sharpie. And it, it works out fine. So I'm just cutting this in nice and close. And I'm going to go and look long, dipping it in the blue and the white. And cutting in close on the eyelid. And now I'm going to do the brush stroke into the pink. Light brush stroke. I'm going to get some blue, put it on there. It's just easier when you have the paint right here on the canvas so that you can kind of use a really light stroke and brush it into the little crevice in between the brush strokes of the pink. That's why I like it. Like this zone right here, I can really, you know, get it on there and just kind of like, it's kind of like dumping it here and then kind of mixing it and then using a light stroke and you get a lot more control rather than dipping and dipping and mixing and and all of this stuff you don't have to do all of that because this area right here can be like the landing spot for your paint and then it's it's very fast and then once you get that area completed then you just paint over it you know get the brush strokes and you have lots of plenty of paint and you can work the paint out into the into the line. Oh, he's looking so cute. Okay, I'm coming through. And remember, you don't want to have the black line too thick. Now I'm gonna get this paint out, get some blue. I'm going to put it right here, get some white. You always have to have white in with your color to cover the black line. And I'm coming out. Cutting it in really closely to the bottom of the eye. And the brush strokes coming out. Now, if you notice on the magnet, there's like kind of like a table line. You can do that if you want. Um, it's up to you. I think I'm just going to do blue the whole way just because the proportions are a little bit different. But the important thing is that you do the same technique and that you don't lose this bottom jawline. So what I'm going to do is get some white. I'm going to 
put some right here and some blue. And now with the heart, I'm just going to go around the outside of the heart. I'm going to cover up some of the black line and cut into the claws, make that really tight as well. And also what you can do if you like, you can use for the bigger portions, you can use your bigger brush. But I think I'm liking this. I'm liking this little brush. This is a new addition to the painting bags. Before I would just I just had this brush, but I think I like this brush more. I don't know. Might be some changes. All right, so we have about 12 minutes left. And I would just wanna make sure that we get through everything, which I think we will. You know, it's pretty much a matter of coming in, covering part of the black line. And making the black line thin. I think I'll use the bigger brush for those bigger areas. But here I'm going to get it in real close without, without covering up the chin line. And I have my brush kind of like on an angle. Sometimes I, I might need a little bit of water just to get it nice and with a light stroke, a real light stroke. Let me get some more blue, get some more white. So if you're getting low on your white, you might want to stop and you want to use your second white. Stop what you're doing. Do a second layer on these, the claws. And if you need to do a second layer on, on your eyes, and then you can use it. I just like to save some white that doesn't have any other color in because of just the way that, the way that we paint or the way that we are painting is, it's kind of, you know, you're dipping it in there and it getting all dirty, but that's another, that's another good thing because if you have some complementary color or another color that's in there, it's going to kind of tone down. These are all primary colors and it's nice to mix in a little bit of another color. Sometimes when I do like the background, like if you'll notice on here, this is green. So it's like the blue and the yellow. I mix that together and then I mix it in with the yellow. So it's like I really work with the color. And when you have primary colors, it, it's very easy to mix color and not get dirt. You know, you don't, you don't want dirt. But you want to be able to mix in color. So, you know, here, just with the blue and white, I'm doing the blue and then doing the white. Rather than having it flat, having it a flat blue. Now I'm just cutting around. Getting some blue. Alternating my colors. Making this black line really thin now. And remember the fur goes out, down. So it's pretty easy. Like the techniques are pretty easy. They're easy to remember. It's very forgiving. If you make a mistake, it's very forgiving as far as, you know, you can go back and fix the black line if you want to, you know, if you lost it. Or if, let's say you made a major mistake and you're painting on your own and you really don't like it. I mean, it's a major mistake. 
All you have to do is just paint it over with black, fix it, and then do layers again and build it back up. But it's easier, I think, to kind of have a general map of where everything is, like where are the eyes, where's the nose, where are the claws, and then kind of tighten it up and just keep tightening it up because you can kind of, you don't have to do it perfectly on the first try. Like if I were doing this with a black line, it would like have to be perfect the first way around. And, and that doesn't happen. I mean, it doesn't happen for me. I really enjoy like looking at it and say, oh, okay, well, this, you know, this line could be a little bit tighter. And so I'll just go in a little bit. And then you look at it and you decide something else. And it's kind of like you, it, it's layer upon layer rather than once and done kind of thing. Okay, so I'm going to take that out all the way to the edge. I think the next step, I'm going to work on, let's see here. Oop, sorry. I have a little timer. We have about six minutes left. Does anybody have any questions that you want to type in the comments? Um, I'm going to do the heart. And... So I'm going to clean out my brush and I want to get red. I'm going to get some white out first, put it in the middle of the heart, get some red and mixing it on the canvas. And I want to leave a black line. So I'm going to get it as close as I want it. You can do whatever you want here. Sometimes I'll put like little dots, polka dots in the black line, which is kind of cute. It looks almost like a Valentine. Um, I like to do that or inside the heart, I put polka dots. I always sparkle my heart, which we have to go over that. Like, where do you want to sparkle your painting? I think I'm gonna sparkle the nails. But the sparkle, you need to do that. It's just like the paint. You know, you have to wait till it dries and then do a second layer. So when it's all dry, you just paint the sparkles on. I wouldn't do it while it's wet because it'll, it'll get lost in the paint. And I usually do it with this sparkle. I, I do a couple layers. So when this is dry, I'll sparkle that heart. I'm gonna do another layer on the nails. And I think the background, I'm gonna do yellow. So I wanna finish up here first. I think I'm gonna take this and do it a little bit more. So once you do the layer with the white to cover the black line, then you can go back in with the color, see how it the red really covers. You don't need to have it as pink if you wanted to do more of a red sloth, you can do that, or blue. You can put a layer of blue right on top of the blue and white mixture and that'll work out well. I'm gonna do another layer and Fill this out a little bit more down here. And let's see here. Now you should have plenty of paint. Plenty of paint to finish this project. Okay, I'm going to do the top part of the forehead. So I'm just going to scoop out some blue. Actually, this, this uh, paintbrush doesn't scoop as well. You know what? I'm going to try. Let's try this one. We have the, like all of the details done. You might like this one better. Um, just kind of get all of the bristles. I got a bunch of bristles out. 
Okay, so I'm going to paddle some of the paint on there, and we're just going to, you know, turn it on its side and have this one I like, or this is the, you can experiment with it. This is the flat side. I like the flat side better than the skinny side, and this actually is pretty quick. So I'm going into the black line, but I'm not covering it. Here I have all my paint, and I'm working the paint. Ooh, I really like this. So I could use this brush. See how it's kind of really um, having like a short furry look, not the longer furry look. It's kind of like he has short hair on the top of his head. He's so cute. He's going to be so cute. Now I encourage you, don't, when we're done here, continue working. Now that you know how, how everything is kind of laid out, just keep working at it. And if you need a break, then then stop and and come back later. This isn't, you know, a coloring page where it's a once and done deal. And, you know, like I said, 45 minutes, I would never finish a painting. So I really like how the paintbrush got that, that um, texture up top, but I kind of like the longer the longer brush strokes against the pink going out. So I'm gonna go back to this one and get some paint on there and then go with this brush and kind of work it in with the longer, the longer strokes so that I can make this black line like really thin, but yet not gone. And then I, I can switch brushes. I do that as well. Kind of fill it in. This is better for coverage because it's a wider brush. And it's funny, like these little brushes are, you know, they're not expensive, obviously, but they work out pretty good. You know, I use them when I'm painting. I did some paintings today. I'm working on like a new little collection. Um. Okay, so we have, like, we're at the end here. And if you have any questions, I would love to see these finished. So if you continue working on them, and if you would like, you can send me a picture of your finished painting. You can send it to Nettie at NettiePrice.com. And I'd love to make, to, uh, last year I made a little video of all of the paintings and they were so adorable. So I would love a picture. Um, if you want, if it's okay with you and I can post it on my Facebook, Facebook page, let me know, otherwise I won't. Um, but I will put them together um, for a little video so that we can see all of the pictures together. So if you have any questions, please feel free to email me later when you're going through the painting. Um, I'll be more than happy to help you and um, just continue to work on it. Don't forget about the sparkle. Um, remember, many layers. Make sure you add white to the color to cover up the black line and just have fun with it. You know, really experiment with the colors. Don't feel like you have to copy the magnet. You know, I, I really encourage you to, to you know, do your own thing and, and make it your own. So thank you so much for painting the sloth with me. This was fun. I'm going to finish mine in a little bit, but for now, we're going to move over to the turtle. So if you are a turtle painter, painter I'm sorry we're four minutes late. Um, I'm going to kind of switch the stuff out. I have new water and I have a new paint pot. So I'm going to do that now. So goodbye, sloth. It's been nice painting you. I'm going to put this over here and here we have the turtle. Yay. And I'm gonna get all new paints. Okay, if you are here for the turtle, welcome, welcome, welcome. Here we have the turtle and I'm gonna get my new water.
switch this out. Flip that over. There we go. It's like nothing ever happened. Okay, so the turtle. Let's talk about the turtle. This might actually, we may go over a little bit because I started late. I'm sorry, I kind of lost track of time. Um, so for everyone who is just starting, I'm going to kind of go through the the whole black line thing, um, just in case you missed it, or why would you if you weren't painting, if you were painting the sloth? But the way I work is I work with a black line. I work from dark to light. And the whole point of having it um, so dark is that number one, the black line allows me to have variation. Now this is kind of different because it's really not a line. I filled in the whole thing just because it was easier because of the shell of what we're doing. But if you notice the turtle, oh, wait, there we go. The turtle has an outline and that outline we create by putting layers on top of it and kind of working from the negative space to the positive space. Now, if you notice, um, some of the lines can get really thin. Just to let you know, if you do cover over a thin and your black line is too thin, I use a Sharpie marker. I go in the next day, let it dry. You have to make sure that it's completely dry. And then, you know, put in the eyelashes. Like, I would not do the eyelashes today. I would do that with a Sharpie marker after the class is over and after my painting is dry. So um, the, the turtle, what we're gonna do is when we paint, we're gonna leave a black line on the outside. And we're gonna start with the shell. And if you notice the geometry of the shell, we have a line of like rectangles. And then there's two houses, a half a house, half a house, and then a one, two, three, four, five, six. Is that a septagon? Is that a word? Oh my gosh, it's been so long. But anyway, six sided shape. <laughs> and then here we have um, one, two, three sided shape, and then the curve of the shell. So, what we're going to do is create these shapes, and then we're going to go in, do the leg the tail, and last, we're gonna do the face because we wanna piece everything in. So what I'm gonna use for the turtle in the shapes of the shell, I'm using the flat brush, and you can pick whatever color you choose. You can make the turtle any color that you like. Now what I'm gonna do, to cover the black line, I have to add white to the color. Now in this situation, I am gonna paddle when we were doing the fur of the sloth, we mixed the paint on the canvas, which works out really well with fur or the wispy lines that go into um, the black line. But for these shapes, because they are flat shapes, I am gonna take it and just scoop it out. I got the paint off of my brush and now I'm gonna use it like a shovel almost. And I wanna get some extra white there. Now I'm going to save a white for later for the eyes. So try to only work out of one white paint pot. So we have the two whites, yellow, blue, and then this is a sparkle that we're going to save for last. Okay, so I have a bunch of paint. We're going to do a square or a rectangle in the middle and then three on each side. So this is the end of the shell. I'm going to go into the middle. I'm going to get some white. Get some red. I'm not really mixing. I'm just kind of like dabbing it on there. And I want to do one, two strokes. Maybe make it a little bit wider like that. That's how I'm making the shape. Now I don't know why my bristle's sticking out, but anyway, I'm going to. Now this, the shell comes up above the tail. I don't want the shell to go into the tail. So I have one and then one, two, three. So one, I'm just gonna map them out. One, two, three. Notice that it's above the tail.
And I'm just going to kind of fill them in so that they are about the same size, you know, because the turtle shell is pretty geometric. But I don't want the middle parts of the black to be too thick. So I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. Boop. Like that. Come out a little bit more. Come out. And now I'm going to do three on this side. So one. And I want it to come above the head. One, two, three. And then make them. the same size, the same width, because we're doing a band of them across the bottom of the turtle. And now I'm just going, kind of making it not a perfect rectangle, or yeah, a perfect rectangle. You know what? What's wrong with that? Okay. All right. There we have the first the first band. And you can like be creative with these little rectangles. Now the next thing we're gonna do a house, and then a six-sided piece. So I'm going to go in the middle of my middle shape here, my middle rectangle, and I'm going to go up and then come out to the second one, two, the second rectangle, and then make a house. So it's just up. And now I don't want to cover up all of the black. So there we have it. And going up to the roof of the house. Remember, there has to be white in here. And I'm just going to fill that in. Now I'm going to draw another house on the other side. I'm going to come up, make it pretty much the same as the other house. Over here, over here, come down to the second block, come down, and now fill it in. Now this is just the first layer. And we're just kind of getting all the shapes in. Is everybody doing okay? All right, now we're gonna do half a house. Over here, doop, and up, doop. And now that, see how the shell curves around? We wanna start that curve. We don't want to go over the black. There we go. Getting some red, some white. I'm going to do the same thing over here on this side. That might be a little bit. There we go. Okay. So this is where we're going to do the six-sided one, the six-sided shape. So we're going to fit it inside the two houses. And I don't want to cover up all the black line. I'm going to take it out to the roof of the house. And now I'm going to go up.
and we top of the house. Pretty easy. I'm going to fill it in, get some red, get some white. Do, do, do. Okay, there we have it. We're almost done. Wow, it's pretty easy. So now I want to fit these, this shape over here and over there. And so what I'm going to do is come down, down. You know what, if you want to use the other brush, you can do that too. I'm going to get the little brush out and dip it. That might be easier for you, whatever works really. Now I'm going to go along with the curve. I don't want to cover up all of the black. I'm going to get some more red. Get another, this is not a good shovel. And coming down. And I want to have the black that's left behind about the same. Yeah, I like this brush. This brush is working out okay. It's almost like tile, you know, like you have the shape of the tile and then the grout, <laughs> if you know what that is. But you know, we're just fitting it in there. Can add another layer. All right, now we have one over here. Get some white and some red. I'm not really mixing it too much on the plate. I like to, I really like to let the colors um, get very painterly. And, and you can see the brush strokes. That's what creates visual interest. I'm going to come up over here and then around the side. Just like that. Okay. Get some red and some white. I think for these smaller, these corners, I like this brush better. I usually kind of like interchange when I'm painting. Okay. Now I just have the top parts. So I'm gonna fit this, comes down, comes over. And it's an arch at the top. And fill it in. That's the red and the white. And so the turtle does not have any fur, <laughs> in case you were wondering. And this one is pretty much a straight technique if you were watching the sloth we did a lot of brush strokes with fur and the turtle didn't have any fur i've never seen a furry turtle have you hmm and i'm just getting this in nice and close just like that that's so pretty now if you look at the magnet you'll see how the turtle shell kind of it's very segmented. And we're gonna do that by, we're gonna kind of come out a little bit. And then when we do the background, the background is gonna come into each one of these little segments. And it's gonna create a real natural looking shell. It, it won't be so angular. So if we do a little bit of a bulge, on each of the shapes, then we'll be able to come in with the background. And I'll show you what I mean. It's just make sure that you don't cover all of the black line. But 
like I said, if you do, it's okay because you have the Sharpie marker. But I want it to come out just a little bit on each of the shelves. And then here, this bottom one, I want this to kind of come out a little bit. Now you can soften these edges. I can go over these guys again. And kind of make them a little bit softer if you have our hard edges. Because if you notice, um, turtle shells, they're kind of, they're not perfect geometric shapes. They're, they grow naturally and, and they have ridges and bumps and imperfections. And I think I, that's another reason why I really love painting this way is that it really allows you to be very um, fluid in like the shapes that you can put on top of the black. Like it, if, if I were to draw this line, it would be more rigid than if I create the line and it just comes about from being the background of another shape. It's like you can't create that. It, it happens. It's not something that you make. If that makes any sense at all. <laughs> I know what I'm trying to say. Okay, now we have the shell. Okay, that's cool. Now we're going to do the um, face. So what we're going to do is mix some green. Yellow and blue make green. So I'm gonna clean out my brush and we're definitely gonna to have to paddle some and mix it on the plate just because we only have primary colors here and green is not one of them. It's a secondary color. So I'm gonna clean out my brush. Here's my little water. I wanna make sure it's pretty clean. And I'm going to put my yellow and the blue and white. So I'm gonna start with the white. Get some white there, because remember, no matter what color you need, you have to add white. I'm, I'm taking a bunch. I'm not holding back. I'm gonna get some yellow. Really put it on here, like I took half of the. And I'm gonna scoop out some blue and put them right next to each other, and two scoops. Two scoops of raisins. Okay, I think I want to use my smaller brush because I like that one for these more detailed. Now, if you notice, there's, if you look at the eye, we're gonna do the eyes. Or no, actually, what were we gonna do? We're gonna do the legs first. That's right. We're not gonna do the eyes first, we're gonna do the legs first. Huh just because then it'll be easier to do the front portion. All right, we're gonna start at the back, work our way front, grab a Skittle. Um, okay, so if you see the tail and the leg, there's a separation. So the first thing I'm gonna do is leg. I am going to take some blue, and yellow and white. I just have it all in the brush. And I'm gonna put it here and I'm gonna mix it on the canvas. Get some more yellow, some more blue. And I just wanna make this leg shape, which comes up to the shell and then around to the bottom of the leg and fill it in. But notice that this leg only goes to here. And now coming around, I still have extra paint here, plenty of paint. 
So now I'm going to come out here and do the tail. And if this tail is too thick, you don't have to do a tail. That's a pretty big tail. You can make it a thin tail and paint over the rest of the black with the background color. So I'm just going to make the tail a little bit thinner. I think that's all right, just like that. Now this is the shape of the tail that I want. And then I'm going to cover the black with yellow. Okay, so I'm going to kind of come in here a little bit closer and maybe make this a little wider. Okay, now we're going to do the same over here. We're going to do the front part of the leg. So I'm going to get some blue. I'm going to put it right in the middle of the leg. Yellow, right in the middle of the leg, and white. Now I just want to make this leg shape. And we're going to cut it off from the head because we want to separate the leg from the neck. Coming down and can make the shape of the leg if you like a skinnier leg. You can do that if you want. And notice how the colors mixing on here is pretty cool. And I want to bring it up close to the shell. And be very light in the corner here. I don't have to take it out as far as the black. I can really go wherever I want it to go as far as the size of the leg. Now I have plenty of paint here. I'm gonna use some of that for the face. Now let's look at the face. The important thing is that you keep the bottom chin line, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to paint, these are the eyes. I'm gonna start with the top of the head. Okay, the eyes are on each side of the head. I'm at the top and I'm coming down. Then I wanna come in and come around for the shape of the eye, around for the shape of the eye, okay? I have more paint on this leg, so I'm gonna get some of that. If not, I get it from my palette. Now notice where the nostrils are. The nostrils are down below the eyes. They're like two watermelon seeds. So just follow along with me. And if you're getting lost, just wait till I'm done before you get started. I'm gonna make a watermelon seed over here. And then I'm gonna make a watermelon. We're doing the outline of the watermelon seed. Okay, and they kinda, now, if they're too big, that's okay because we can still go back in and make them smaller, but we're just we're just placing where everything is. And we want to make sure we leave the black line. So I'm coming around the bottom of the eye. I don't want to cover all the black. And I'm coming down. Now this is the tricky part, so make sure that you watch. This is the chin. We want to make the bottom of the chin and keep the black line. You don't want to cover over the black line. But if you do, no worries. Sharpie to the rescue. Okay. So now I'm going to fill in the face. Just the face. I'm filling in the face, going around the nose. I'm just going to use the paint I have on the leg. And, huh. I just covered over the mouth. <laughs> I just made the mistake that I warned you about, but that's okay. This is perfect learning experience here. So now I'm gonna do the neck. I wanna keep the bottom of the chin line. And I'm going to get some more. And if you want to mix it a little bit on the plate, do that. And I just want to do the section of the neck. So 
So here's my chin line. And I'm going to come in close here. I love this little brush. Get some white. And come in close. There we go. So we didn't lose the leg. There's the leg, the neck, and then the face. Now the mouth. <laughs> I painted right over the mouth, which honestly, I do this all the time. I use a Sharpie marker a lot. I always do. So this is okay. You're just going to have to do it after it dries, which we're not going to be able to do it now. But what you can do is go in with the Sharpie and put in his mouth. Or you don't have to. I mean, really... Really, a turtle's mouth is like hidden, so it's not essential. I just did it because it made him look happy, but you don't really have to. It's up to you. Your call. Okay, there we have it. I'm going to get this line kind of a little bit closer. Get this into here a little bit more. Maybe make the black line a little bit thinner. Now we're going to do the eyelids, which. I'm going to get a good amount of paint. Here, I'll move this over. I cut, when I mix the paint, I kind of twirl the brush so that all the paint comes down to the bottom because you want to get paint on the bottom of the brush because this is pretty delicate. So what I'm going to do is the eye is the lid and it's just a half circle that's kind of slanting down. And then but see how it kind of slants down a little bit. So I'm going to do the other side. Oop. And wish I were left-handed, <laughs> but I'm not. And I'm going to do the other eyelid. see how that is and now I'm going to do the sides of the eye I'm going to leave the black for the pupil okay so I'm going to get most of this off and put it over here I'm going to do another layer over everything so I want to get most of this paint off and I'm going to get off on the paper towel and then I go to my water and that way kind of saves the water from getting really dirty really really dirty all right and now I'm gonna get the white and I'm just gonna take it right out of the paint pot and what I'm gonna do this is pretty quick I'm gonna stabilize my hand put my pinky down and I want to leave black for the pupil. So in order to do that, I just have to paint where the white is. And that is pretty much just a line with a little hook. A line with a little hook. And over here, it's the same thing. I want to leave a line in between the lid and the white. A line and a little hook. And then I'm going to use the back of the paintbrush, dip it in the white, and do a dot over on the side. Pretty quick, pretty painless. Same spot. Aw, look at those eyes. Okay, now we're going to do the background. Background is yellow and white. Or, you know, you could do whatever you want. You can mix, use some of the blue. I mean, you can do whatever you want in here. I think I'm going to just start with yellow and then go from there and see what happens. Um, on the example, I did a layer of yellow and then did some white, like, brush strokes on top. But you can do whatever you want to do. But the, the main things that I want to show you is that 
um, I'm dipping it in the yellow, in the white, is the shell part. And I think I'm gonna do around the head, I'm, gonna, I'm using my small little brush. I want to cut in really close without covering the black line. And I'm just dipping it in, or you can dip it in the pots, whichever one you would like. And then I'm coming in close, I'm coming in close, I'm not covering the black line, but then I'm gonna come into this shell a little bit. Real close. And you'll be able to see it more when I come up around the side of what I'm doing. Cutting it in close and then I come into the divot. So then coming around and come into the divot. And then it makes it a real natural shape. See how this is so much different than that hard edge? We're gonna go all the way around and come into the divot. And then come into the divot. Come into the divot. And then I'm gonna use the bigger brush for the background, but I just wanted to show you how, and I have a lot of paint on my brush. There's plenty of paint here to complete these paintings, so. When, when you paint, it's like I dollop it on. Okay, now I'm gonna come down here into the divot, cut it in real close to the tail, and I made the tail smaller. So I'm gonna paint over it with the yellow and white, with the background color. So it's like you kind of build your way up to the shape that you want. Now I'm gonna come in close to the leg. And I don't necessarily have to cover up that black. I kind of like the shadow. I like the, the, the effect it creates with the black showing through. So now I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna cut up close and come into the divot. Kind of like the way that has a ring to it. Coming into the divot and into the divot. And try to get it as close as you can. There we go. Cute, cute, cute. Does anybody have any questions? We have about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and the turtle, I think, is a lot easier than the sloth. Um, but I think because of the brush strokes. So if you have any questions, please type them in the comment section. And one thing I forgot to mention, it is in the description. Um, if you have the dinosaur pick, I think, I think it's in it. I think it's in the turtle. I don't, I honestly, I don't know which one and I wouldn't know anyway, but like, I think it's in the turtle and it's a dinosaur picture and it says you won the gift bag. And the gift bag is like a little collection of you know, like a coloring book and a print and all kinds of fun stuff. I think there's a calendar in there and some magnets and, you know, there's just a cute little gift bag of all my stuff. So you can pick that up at the office. That'll be there. If you have any questions, you know, send me an email. If you have any questions about your painting, um, please feel free to send me an email. Also, I would love to have a picture of your finished painting with the sparkles and everything. Now, just so you know, um, oh, and, and you can send the picture to Nettie at NettiePrice.com um, on my website. You can contact me through Facebook. Um, 
on YouTube, on the comments, you can contact me there. But I think my email is the best. And then I'm going to do a little video of everybody's paintings, which will be really cute. And I won't, if, if it's okay if I post it on Facebook, let me know. If not, um, if you don't say anything, I won't. I wouldn't, I'm not going to post anything. But some of the pictures, last year we did this, and the pictures were adorable. Oh my gosh, the kids did a great job. They were so cute. And the pictures and so I encourage you to do more layers even after we're done I mean obviously we are not done and um just keep doing layers upon layers and when I do layers um it, it's kind of like you want to work with a layer before you don't want to cover it completely you want to use it to build up depth so I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second I just wanted to get around the outside of the turtle which I think this is just so stinking cute I love it okay so what do I mean by building up with layers so we have the shell and for the shell I'm going to get this other paintbrush I'm going to do another layer of and you can do whatever color you want I mean I think I've done this class and one kid did like all different colors on each of the shapes and it was just so neat it was just the creativity is amazing um but i'm just going to show you the a basic way i'm just going to take i'm going to take this white and some of this yellow i'm going to mix a little bit here and i'm going to do it and put it on but I'm not going to cover the whole thing. I'm just going to cover the inside of the shape. And I want to let the brush strokes go through. And I want it not to be perfect. I don't want it to be a perfect flat layer. I want to show the brushes strokes. I want the black to come through. I want the colors to be mixed on the canvas. I think that's where you really get painterly strokes. And it's like nobody can recreate that if you allow the paint to do its magic. But a lot of times people don't allow it. They just they think, oh, I gotta mix this, I gotta mix it. So it's like this color, this, you know, perfect color. And yeah, that's not how I roll. So here we are with the second layer. And if you all have any questions, that would be great. Let me know. And I'm gonna go over here. So I just wanted to show you what I meant by that. And I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go on the inside of the tortoise shell. And here, I'm just gonna do a quick across them all. I'm gonna kind of make some look like they have some depth to them. Okay, now if you want to do what I definitely will do later after this dries is I'll take the Sharpie and I will cut in, I'll go over the eyes and then put some eyelashes on them because I put eyelashes on everything. And um, I'm going to put sparkle, sparkle in the shell. So the, the sparkles, you have to wait till everything's dry and then you paint it on like paint. So it's important that you don't do it while the painting is still wet because the sparkles will just mix in with the paint and it won't work out very well. So that is about it for that. What I'm going to do is clean out my brush and go back to go back to the white and the yellow for my background or whatever color you choose. Really completely up to you. So with this kind of texture, and this is what I like to do with um, a lot of the colors, like if I'm going to do a one color for a background, I'm going to do some brush strokes, get the paint off, and then get a whole bunch of white. 
and kind of alternate the colors. That's another technique that I like to use. And then you can see the brush strokes. That's the whole point of switching up the colors and switching the direction of the brush as well. And then I'll go in and get some yellow and almost do like a, a it's like a, not a polka dot, but like a brush stroke within brush strokes. And maybe I'll go over a little bit of the, of the black that's left over. And I'm just switching it up, yellow and then white. And really just get the paint on there and fit it in like a puzzle, like puzzle pieces. Now you can like get some other colors in here. I'm gonna get some of the, the pink and do, just get some of that. And it's, I switch the direction, do, 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 do. There, well, we go in there and get some red. And then, you know, mix the white if you want it more subtle. So this is what I did on the magnet with just the, the white and the yellow. Sometimes I'll add different colors in there. Do, 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 do. It's kind of cool. You can experiment. Do whatever you want. So I'm not really like, I'm doing more like a, like a dot dot. And then mixing the paint. As we go. So, no, I think we're getting it to, right? I should have plenty of white here. You can put little toenails on the turtle too. I don't have them on here, but I just thought of that. I think that would be really cute. And how I would do that is just use the back end of the brush. And I think I'm going to do yellow and then just do dots and kind of work it. I don't even know if turtles have toenails. They don't. They don't have toenails. But turtles don't have eyelashes either. So I kind of make it up as I go. But that's the fun about the fun part about being creative is that it's it's really it's yours. So you can do whatever you want. That's what art's about, is to just be creative and try different things. And, you know, and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. There's always another canvas board. There's always another piece of paper or, you know, it's about, it's about doing it. And I can't tell you how many hours I have spent painting. I used to be a teacher and I resigned 10 years ago to start my business. And I have been doing this for a long time, it seems. But I always painted, even when I was a kid, when I was like in elementary school, all through high school, middle school. So it's something that, I mean, you don't have to be a professional. You don't have to sell anything. You don't have to I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that it, it's a great way to spend your time rather than, you know, watching TV or especially when you can't go outside. I, I personally would love to go outside, but like it, it's really a good way to engage your mind is painting because you're creative. You can have to create your own little world and it's part of you. You know, I look at all of these little creatures that I paint and they're endearing to me. They, they make me smile. They make other people smile. And really that's what, that's what it's about. So I hope you enjoy this time and, you know, keep working at it. If you want to go back, watch the sloth, there's 
um, the tutorial there. I have more tutorials on my YouTube channel. Please feel free to go check them out. There's like cats and dogs and all kinds of fun stuff. Maybe I'll add a little red. Well, I guess that's, I'm gonna let this dry and then put the sparkle on when everything's dry. Then maybe tomorrow, if I need to Sharpie, go over it with some Sharpie and don't forget to sign it, sign it and date it and send me a picture. That would be great. So I can see your finished work. And I hope that everybody keeps on painting because it's good for you. <laughs> All right, well, that's about it. If uh, you have any questions, please let me know. If you'd like to see more of my artwork, you can go to nettyprice.com. Ouch, I just hit my head on the light. Um, thank you so much, and it's been really fun. I hope to do this again sometime. Okay, take care, everybody. Bye.